Lux Radio Theatre. Tonight and every Monday night at this time, Lux Radio Theatre presents for your entertainment the finest in radio drama. This week we present Five Finger Exercise by Peter Schaffer. Walter Lange, a sensitive young German, has fled to England from a Nazi father and a country of which he is bitterly ashamed. He looks forward to finding a new home and new happiness in his job as tutor to 14-year-old Pamela Harrington. But the Harringtons are a desperately unhappy family. Louise despises her husband's philistinism and he considers her cultural yearnings as fatuous. Their entire married life has been a battlefield with their son Clive as ammunition. Walter's arrival leads to further disruption and it takes a near tragedy to shock the Harringtons into awareness of their cruelty towards one another. Five Finger Exercise has been adapted for radio by Helen Cunningham, produced for Lux Radio Theatre by Rolf Jacobs, and directed by Delphine Lethbridge. Where's Clive? Why hasn't he come down to breakfast? He's coming now. I let him sleep in. He was mm. very late last night. Sam! Well, good, good morning, Father. Hello, Mother. Good afternoon. What do you think this place is? An hotel? I'm sorry. Good morning, Juju. How did you sleep, darling? Oh, very well, thank you. Don't I get a kiss this morning? That's better. I'm afraid the eggs are cold now. Let me get you some more. Oh, no, thanks. These are all right. Where's Pam? She's out walking with her tutor. What on earth do you mean? Her tutor, darling. You know, the German boy I engaged in London to come every day and give Pamela her lessons, Walter Langer. Well, he's going to live with us as part of the family. You mean, you mean he's here now? Yes. Isn't it amusing? He came down with us last night on the 6.30 train. It's my big surprise. Pamela's mad about the idea. I thought you would be, too. Why should I be? I hardly know him. Well, you will now. He's terribly nice, marvellously educated and with the most divine manners. I'll get some fresh coffee. Well, and when was all this decided? Yesterday morning in London, after you left the house. But it's ridiculous. I mean, it's unnecessary. Your mother thinks differently. Apparently, the best people have tutors, private tutors. And since we're going to be the best people, whether we like it or not, we're going to have a tutor, too. We don't send our daughter to anything so common as a school. Oh, I can afford it. What is money, after all? We have a town place in London, so we've simply got to have a country place here in Suffolk. You always said you wanted a country place. I meant a little weekend cottage, not a great fancy place like this. However, now we've got a country place, we've simply got to have a tutor. Now, look, Stanley, this is Walter's first day down here, and I want everyone to be very sweet to him. So just keep your ideas to yourself. We don't want to hear any of them. Hmm. That's your coffee, Clive. Why were you so late last night? Well, I, I, I got involved in London. I had some work to do. Work? I promised to reveal something. It's going to be printed. Oh. <laughs> in the Times, I suppose. No. It's more of a magazine, really. It's not very well known. But, well, it meant two free tickets. What for? A play. Oh, what was it, dear? Electra. What's that? You can't mean it. Mean what? You can't mean you don't know Electra. Oh, really, Stanley. There are times when I have to remind myself about you. Actually remind myself. Suppose you tell me, then. Go on, educate me. Clive, dear, you explain it to your father, will you? Well, go on. It's Greek. Oh, one of those, eh? Culture. It's poetry, Stanley. Of course, I don't expect you to understand. And this is the sort of thing you want to study at Cambridge, Clive, hmm? When you go up next month. Greek poetry. Yes. Hmm. You don't seem to realize the world you're living in, my boy. When you finish at this university, which your mother insists you go to, you'll have to earn your living. I won't always be here to pay for everything, you know. All this culture stuff's very fine for those who can afford it, for the knobs and snobs we're always hearing about from your mother. But if you can't stand on your own two feet, you won't amount to anything. Unfortunately, my dear, we were not all born orphans. <laughs> we didn't all go to grammar schools or build up a furniture factory on our own sheer willpower. We can never hope to live down these shortcomings, of course, but... Don't you think you might learn to tolerate them? Well, I'll talk to you again later, Clive. Unless you'd like a 
round of golf. Oh, no, of course not. You'd rather lounge around indoors all weekend. You know, Clive, I don't understand you. I don't understand you at all. Not at all. Breakfast as usual. Oh, it's just one of his moods, dear. Oh, yes. Oh, Juju, I want you to be happy down here, darling. Really happy. Not pretending. After all, it's why I made Daddy buy this place. To, to get away from London and relax in our own little retreat. So, you see, you've just got to be happy. You can't let me down, can you? Oh, no. Very well. I promise you six big laughs a day and twelve little giggles. <laughs> darling. <laughs> oh, my darling Juju, that's a promise to be happy. I can tell when you're not, you know, and that makes me miserable also. So remember, no compliments. No compliments. Hurry up, Walter. You're the slowest walker I ever met. Oh, you must be in dreadful condition. Oh, I'm older than you are. Oh, no, you're not going to get out of it as easily as that. After all, you're only 22. <laughs> and you're 14. Uh, come now. We've had a good walk. Off with your coat and on with your French lesson. Oh, fooey to French. I hate it, really. I'd rather study German. No. Oh, I forgot. You don't teach German. But why not? I, I mean, you'd make much more money doing that than anything else. No. Walter, do you miss your home? I have no home. Still, there must be things you miss. Birthdays or, or Christmas or something. Christmas, yes. Is that all? You really are a very strange young man. Am I? I suppose it's it's part of living in a foreign country all the time. It's not foreign. I've been here five years, and soon I'll get my citizenship. Then you'll be English. Yes. Then you'll like Christmas here, too, because your home will be with us. Don't you have any family at all? No, no one. But that's the wrong answer now. When I say, have you got no family, you must say... Yes, of course I have a family, and a very fine one, too. Now, repeat after me. My family lives at 22 Elton Square, London, and the retreat, Lower Orford, Suffolk. Come on. My family lives at 22 Elton Square, London, and the retreat, Lower Orford, Suffolk. Good. Ten out of ten. Now you look much happier. You should wear a, a high collar and one of those floppy ties wear your hair sleek and romantic like this. Oh, stop that. No, it's terribly becoming. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> you must... Oh, there's your mother calling me. I must go now. You get on with your history. Oh. Oh, hello, Clive. Welcome to the family. Oh, thank you. I, I think your mother was calling me. Yes, she's in the music room through there. Oh, you have a music room here. Oh, yes, mother must have a music room. Luckily, it's at the back of the house because his lordship doesn't care for music. How do you like being tutor to my kid sister? Oh, she is delightful. When your mother engaged me to teach her, I, I was so pleased. My last job was not so easy. Now that I have been invited to live with you, I, I'm very happy. This is my first family. Yes. <laughs> well, let me give you a word of warning. This isn't a family. It's a tribe of wild animals. Between us, we eat everyone we can. Everyone? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, we are very choosy about our victims. We only eat other members of the family. <laughs> then I must watch out. Your sister thinks I'm almost a member already. Oh, what, my dear? I do hope I didn't disturb Pam's lesson, but I'm longing for us to start out. I was on my way to the music room. Oh, I thought this morning you could do the playing and I'd just watch. I mean, you could try my little piano. See what it's capable of. I'd be delighted, Mrs. Harrington. Oh, you have such beautiful hands, Walter. Oh, I must give you a nickname. Huh? Walter's much too formal. Let me see. Mm, it must be French, of course. I'm of French descent, you know. I've got it. Clive is Juju, so you must be Hebrew. Perfect. Hebrew the owl. He looks rather like a little owl, don't you think? Oh, why not poo? That's better still. Oh, you're impossible this morning, Clive. Your father's right. A walk in the fresh air would do you good. Yes, as you and Walter will be busy with your music, that's just what I'll do. What are you going to play for me, Hebo? Something then. <laughs> Coffee, Juju? 
Oh, no, thanks. I think you might have caught an earlier train down from Cambridge. I cooked a special dinner to welcome you home. All your favorite things. I'm sorry. Actually, I had a perfectly good sandwich provided by British Railways. It seems to me you've got into some bad habits during the two months you've been at Cambridge. Isn't that your third drink already? Well, what if it is? It's a special weekend, isn't it? The first one he's been home. How much longer is that row going on? Another half hour. And that's what you call great music? It's only scales. You can't expect her to be an expert in a couple of months. Yeah. Walter says she's getting on very well. Can I help you with that train? No, thank you. Oh, really, it's absurd. Even Paderewski had to practice once. Clive, do you remember coming to the factory for your allowance the day you went up to Cambridge? Yes, I do. Did you have a talk with my manager while you were waiting? Did I? I suppose I did. Is it true that you told him you thought the furniture I make was, uh, what was it, uh, shoddy and vulgar? Oh, well? I think I said it lacked. What? Well, that it didn't use materials as well as it might. Wood, for example. And the design was shoddy and vulgar? Well, yes, I suppose I gave that impression. Not all of it, of course, just some things. What things? Well, those terrible oak cupboards, for example. I think you call them the Jacobean line. And those three-piece suites and mauve plush, things like that. Mr. Clark said you called them grotesque. Is that right? Grotesque? Well, I think they are, rather. And I suppose you think that's clever. That's being educated, I suppose. To go to my manager in my own factory and tell him you think the stuff I'm turning out is shoddy and vulgar, is it? Now, Stanley, I heard what you said. But just because you've got no taste, it doesn't mean we all have to follow suit. I'm talking to the boy. Now, listen to me, Clive. Get this into your head once and for all. I'm in business to make money. I give people what they want. I mean ordinary people. Maybe they haven't such wonderful taste as you and your mother. But they know what they want. And if they didn't want it, they wouldn't buy it and I'd be out of business. And before you start jeering again, young man, just remember something. You've always had enough to eat. Yeah. One stops, the other starts. I, I'm going out. This is the first weekend we've all been here together since Clive went up to Cambridge. Yeah. I think the least you can do is to stay home the first evening. Walter? Walter? Did you call Mrs. Harrington? Do you think you could play your records some other time, dear? Mr. Harrington has got a slight headache. Of course, Mrs. Harrington. I'm so sorry. So very sorry. Thank you, dear. Come down when you want to. I'll make some fresh coffee. Now, while I'm in the kitchen, Stanley, do try and be a bit more pleasant to Clive. I'm sorry I said that about the furniture, Father. I suppose it was rather tactless of me. Never mind. How are you settling in Cambridge? What about the other boys? Do you get on with them? And it's not exactly a prep school, you know. You'd rather pick your own friends. Yeah, I suppose you do. Clive, as you know, your mother and I didn't see eye to eye about sending you to university. But that's past history now. The point is... What are you going to make of it, eh? Well, that's rather as it turns out, I should have thought. Education, Clive, I'm not talking about education. By all means, take advantage of your studies. Look here, boy, and let's not pretend. Everyone doesn't get to Cambridge. You know it, and I know it. You're in a privileged position, and you must make the most of it. What do you mean? Father? Take your friends, for example. Now's the time for you to be making contacts with the right people. I mean people who will be useful to you later on. I don't mean the smart people or the fancy la di da people your mother is always on about. I mean the people who matter, the people who have influence. Get in with them now and you won't go far wrong. I never had your opportunities. The contacts I made, I had to work up myself. So I know what I'm talking about. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Good. Now you've got a good brain and I'll see to it you've got enough money. Never be so foolish as to look down on money, my boy. That's one thing that counts in the end. I had to ask you to stop your record player. Oh, it's me to be sorry. Uh, how is Mr. Harrington's headache? Oh, it's nothing serious, my dear. He's gone out to get some fresh air. Come and sit down. I've made some fresh coffee. And Clive? Pamela went for a walk, and he's gone to look for her. P 
poor boy. I'm afraid he gets rather upset down here. He's essentially a tardy person like me. Well, here's your coffee. Help yourself to show. Oh, thank you. I, I'm sorry, Clive. He's not happy. Oh, he gets it from me. I'm not a very happy person either, you know. Is there anything I can do? Anything at all? No, dear boy, except when you marry, be sure the girl you choose is your equal. I was very young when I met Stan Lynn. Believe it or not, I'd hardly met anyone outside my hometown. My parents, both coming from professional people, naturally had reservations about allowing me to marry into the furniture trade. But I was attracted to Stanley, I won't deny it. He had a sort of rugged charm, as they say. Obviously, I was interested in all kinds of things like art and music and poetry, which he, poor man, had never had time for. But when you're young, those things don't seem to matter. It's only when the first excitement's gone you start looking a little closer. Oh, Walter, these last few years have been intolerable. I've had to kill the artistic side of myself, smother it, stamp it out. Heaven knows I've tried to be interested in his bridge and his golf and his terrible business friends. I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Oh, forgive me, I didn't mean to talk like that. I'm embarrassing you. No. I'm being vulgar, aren't I? You could never be. Oh, dear, Hibu. You know, don't you? You of all people must understand why I stayed. It was because of the children. At least I could see they weren't stifled, too. Do you condemn me? How could I condemn you in your house? Oh, I think we can leave hospitality on one side. No, no. In the house you have given me also to live in, so that I can sit here and, and talk to you as, as if I always had the right. Dear Walter. Where I worked before, I, I, I taught the children for two or three hours. I, I was paid by the mothers and went back always to my small room with my cooking, which is not so good. <laughs> You will never know how much I owe to you. Oh, my dear boy. Tell me about your family, your people in Germany. There's nothing to tell. Oh, there must be something. Uh, my parents died when I was too young to remember them. I, I was brought up by my uncle and his wife. Were they good to you? Very good, yes. Oh, don't think I'm being inquisitive. It's only that you've come to mean so much to us all in the past two months. I, I do not deserve it. Oh, you deserve far more. Far, far more. I knew as soon as I saw you at that terrible cocktail party, even before I spoke to you, I knew you were quite exceptional. I remember thinking, such delicate hands and that fair hair, it's the hair of a poet. When he speaks, he'll have a soft voice that stammers a little from nervousness and a lovely Viennese accent. I am not Viennese, you know. I, I am German. Well, it's not so very different. I am German. That is not so poetic. Oh, really, Hebrew? You do not understand Germans. They can be monsters. But Hebrew, there's good and bad in all countries. I mean, even in England, we're not all angels. Oh, angels to me. Because this, to me, is paradise. How charming you are. No. I am sincere. You see, here in England, most people want to do what is good. Where I come from, it is different. They want only power. They are enraged by equality. They need always to feel ashamed, to breathe in shame, like oxygen, to go on living. Because deeper than everything else, they want to be hated. From this they believe they are giants, even in chains. I, I'm sorry. It's, it's difficult to talk about. Anything one feels deeply is hard to speak of, my dear. One thing I do know. I will never go back. Soon I will be a British subject. Oh, I can see that you've suffered. It's in your face. Oh, Walter, you mustn't torment yourself like this. It's not good for you. You're among friends now. People who want to help you. And people who love you. Doesn't that make a difference? Oh, you are so good to me. So good. Good. Oh. Oh, my dear. Kissing my hands. You make me feel ashamed. It's so long since anyone has talked like this to me. Oh, Juju. Did you have a nice walk? Did you find Pam? 
Oh, it's absurdly late for her to be walking alone. Uh, are you sure you didn't see her? She may be upstairs. After all, I'll, I'll just go and see. Clive, what's the matter? Why are you looking at me like that? Hair's been worn disheveled this year. The Medusa style. What would have happened if Medusa had looked in a mirror? Are monsters immune against their own fatal charm? Please. The charming tutor and his employer by the fireside. So delicate, so old world. Oh, Clive, why are you talking like this? Because I'm not so delicate. In fact, I'm getting less delicate all the time. If you had come from Europe, if you had been taken in as I was, alone, then perhaps... Taken in. Taken in is right. Excuse oh, me. Oh, no, taken up like a fashion or an ornament. A piece of Dresden, a dear little Dresden owl. And believe me, like any other valuable possession, sooner or later you will be used. I know this family, I tell you. Walter, come away on a holiday with me. Come away? Look, in four weeks my term ends. We could go somewhere, anywhere, to the West Country. Wells Cathedral is the most astonishing thing in England. No one will be there in Christmas. Do come. You'd love it. I'm sorry. Christmas is a family time. For so long, I have missed it. This year, I wish very much to spend it here. Well, afterwards. I, I'm afraid that's not possible. My work, you see, I, I have been paid already to the end of January. So what? I, I, I have an uh, obligation. To my mother? Yes. Is that what you call it? An obligation? Well, doff my plumed hat, gallant Walter Lunger. The cavalier tutor to his mistress. Don't well, look so startled. Proper cavaliers have only figurative mistresses. Department of old world charms. <sighs> this is quite beyond anything, isn't it? If you came on this holiday with me, it would be for my sake, not yours. I need a friend badly. Oh, you are unhappy. I, I am sorry. I, I really would like yes. to... That's all you can say. I'm sorry. Such an awkward position I put you in, don't I? The poor little immigrant, careful not to offend, so very sensitive. When are you going to stop trading on your helplessness, offering yourself all day to be petted and stroked? Okay, you're a pet. You, you've got an irresistible accent. You make me sick. Excuse me. Walter, please, I didn't... Good night, Clive. What are you doing, Clive? Stealing a drink. Stealing? You don't have to steal from me. You're old enough to take a drink if you want one. Where's your mother? Upstairs, probably with Pam. She came in a few minutes ago. Oh, you should have come with me. I've been to the golf club. Jolly nice crowd there. The sort of fellas you ought to be mixing with. Come with me next time and I'll make you a member. I'll, you'll be able to get on with them if you try. Yes. Well, I think I'll go to bed now. Just a minute. What's the matter? Aren't they good enough for you? Is that it? No, of course it isn't. Then what? All this stuff, the right people, wrong people, people who matter. It's all so meaningless. It's not meaningless. All right, they matter, but not to me. And my friends, they wouldn't mean a thing to you. Now, Clive, I'm glad to know that you've got some nice friends. Don't do that. Don't patronize me. It's too much. I'm not patronizing you. Oh, yes, you, you are. I'm glad you have some nice friends, Clive. I had two at your age. They aren't my plague piles. They're important people, important to me. Did I say they were? Important! It's important they should be alive. Every person they meet should be altered by them. Or at least remember them with terrific, terrific excitement. That's an important person. Can't you understand? No, Clive. I told you. I don't understand you. Not at all. And you're proud of it, too. What now? That you don't understand me. Has it ever occurred to you that I don't understand you? No, of course it hasn't. Because you're the only one who does the understanding around here. What work did you put into being able to understand anybody? I think you'd better go to bed. Do you think it falls into your lap like some sort of grace that enters you when you become a father? You're drunk. You treat me like a child. But you don't even know the way to treat a child. Because a child is private and important and itself. Not an extension of you any more than I am. I am myself. Myself, myself. You think of me only as what I might become, what I might make of myself, but 
I am myself now. With every breath I take, every blink of the eyelash, the taste of a chestnut or a strawberry on my tongue is me. The smell on my skin is me. The trees and the fields that I see with my own eyes are me. You should want to become me and see as I see them, but we can never exchange. Feelings don't unite us, you see. They keep us apart. And words are no good because they're unreal. Yes, I'm drunk. Because you make me drunk. I do? Oh, you and everything. You've, uh, you've given me something to think about, old boy. <laughs> it's getting late. Don't you think you'd better go upstairs? We'll talk about it again in the morning. Well, uh, I'll say good night. <laughs> I said good night. <laughs> Live, I said. What's the matter, boy? Come on, out with it. After all, I am your father. There's something really wrong, isn't there? No. Did something happen while I was out? No. Well, what is it? Did your mother say something? Is it something to do with Walter? That's it. Walter. Clive, what happened with Walter? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me what happened with Walter. It was Mother. What? I came in, and they were there on the sofa. He was kissing her. She was half undressed, and he was kissing her on the mouth, on the throat, kissing. How dare you? <clears throat> Department of Just Desserts. <laughs> Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, dear. Where's Clive? He hasn't come down yet, lazy pig. You were talking to him late last night, weren't you? I could hear you from upstairs. Well, really, it seemed more like Clive talking to you. He must have been drunk. Why do you say that? Because if he wasn't, he never would have. Not properly, anyway. He'd be too nervous. Nervous? Yes, because you like him to answer questions all the time. And he hates to. Why? I don't know. I suppose he's just not the answering type. Do you know, he even has a dream about you. Clive has? Yes. He gets it quite often. So he must think an awful lot about you. You ought to be flattered. Though it's not what I'd call a flattering dream. What is this dream? Apparently, he's in bed, lying under thick blankets. There's an open window. It's freezing cold outside... And he can hear twigs snapping on the trees. And suddenly you appear, coming slowly towards him. You cross the room to see if he's asleep. You stand there. And then you start taking off the blankets, one by one. Clive says there must be about ten blankets. And with each one you take off, he gets colder and colder. Usually he wakes up with the bedclothes on the floor. Isn't it the silliest dream you ever heard? I told him the next time he heard you coming, he was to wait until you came up to the bed, then sit bolt upright and shout, Go to the devil! Where's coffee? Pam, you'll be late for your ride. I've finished breakfast. I'm just going. Goodbye, Daddy. Enjoy the ride. And tell Kai for me, if he's not down right away, he won't get any breakfast. Where's your coffee, Stanley? I don't want any, thanks. What's the matter? Why are you sitting like that just staring? Did you have too much to drink last night or something? I... I must get outside for a while. Stanley! Oh, there you are, Clive. You slept late. Perhaps you had a little too much to drink last night, too. What do you mean? Is clippers or eggs? Mm, nothing, thank you. Oh, now what is it? First your father, now you. Where is he? Outside, gone for a walk, no doubt. No, he's in the garden. I can see him sitting under the apple tree. Sitting? On a freezing day like this, without an overcoat? He must be mad. He thinks he's doing, I can't imagine. Leave him alone. Clive, are you speaking to me? Leave him alone. What's the matter with you this morning? I don't understand you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It's all right, don't worry. But I do. Oh, you should come here. Oh, you silly boy. Do you think I'm so stupid that I don't know what's wrong? Do you think I can't see for myself? We're a little bit jealous, aren't we? As if you didn't always come first. You know that, don't you? Yes. Then it's ridiculous to be jealous, isn't it? And of whom? 
A poor, lonely boy with no people of his own to care for him and all by himself in a foreign country. Oh, really, Juju, you ought to be ashamed. Now, give me a kiss and we'll say no more about it. That's right. And remember, I want you to be happy. Very, very happy. You're too late for breakfast. Oh, I had mine a long time ago. I've been listening to Brahms on my record player. Very quietly, of course. Oh, you should have been out riding or playing golf. Uh, don't you know, in all English homes, on a bright Sunday morning, it's reserved for sport. Oh, yes. Where I was born, it was the same. You had to be out playing games? Games, yes. But in small uniforms. Oh, I suppose every kid wants to be a soldier. Oh, yes. But in England, they are not told it is a good thing to be. Why did your uncle think it was? <laughs> Parents and guardians are very unreliable. Perhaps we expect too much of them. After all, they are only us a little older. Clive, I'm sorry I ran out on you last night. Oh, let's forget it. It was kind of you to suggest a holiday together. I... No, you are not happy here. If you would like to talk to me about Walter, it... Walter, don't misunderstand me, but... Are you sure you did the right thing when you left Germany? You sound as if you want me to go back. Yes. Why? Last night you did not want it? Last night? I want it now. I want you to go. For your own sake. Only for your sake, believe me. You've got a crush on our family that's almost pathetic. Can't you see how lucky you are to be on your own? Just because you've never had a family, you think they're the most wonderful things in the world. Oh, Clive. Why have you got to depend all the time? It's so confounded weak. You know nothing. I can see. What can you see? My parents? My father? Can you see him in his Nazi uniform? But you told me your parents were dead. Yes, I know. They are alive. There was no uncle. Your father was a Nazi. Oh, yes. He was a great man. Everybody was afraid of him. So was I. When the war came, he went off to fight. We did not see him for six years. When he came back, he was still a Nazi. Everybody else was saying, we never liked him. We never supported him. But not my father. Even now we are defeated. We are the greatest country in Europe, he'd say. And one day, we will win. Because we have to win. He used to make me recite the old slogans against Jews and Catholics and liberals. When I forgot, he would hit me. But your mother? She worshipped him. She used to smile at him, stare at him, as though he owned her. And when he used to hit me, she would just, just look away. As though what he was doing was difficult, yes, but unavoidable. Like training a puppy. That was my muscle. I'm sorry. So, you see, Clive, I do know what it is to have a family. And what I look for is somewhere where there's goodness, kindness. Do you think you found it here? You're fooling yourself every minute. For heaven's sake, get out of here. But why? I don't understand. What? Go on. Answer her. It's your duty, isn't it? Clive. Answer Walter. her. I'm going. Walter? Oh, here you are, my dear boy. You all alone? Uh, Clive was here. He's just gone. Oh? Uh, I don't know. Mrs. Harrington, I, I'm most worried for him. Oh, poor Hebrew. You worry about everyone, but you really mustn't worry about Clive. It's just a tiny case of old-fashioned jealousy, that's all. He and I have always been so close. Oh, of course. Oh, he'll get over it. At the moment, he thinks there must only be room in my heart for one boy. So silly. Come and sit by me. I don't believe you can ration love. Do you? With someone like you, it, it is not possible. Nor with you, my dear. You know, last night held the most beautiful moments I've known for many years. I felt, well, that you and I could have a, a really warm friendship. Even with the difference, I mean, in our ages. Between friends, there are no ages, I think. 
I like to think that, too. In a family, you don't notice how old people are because you keep growing together. Yes. Dear little owl. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you embarrassed? What's the last thing you must be with me? <laughs> and now you're smiling. What are you thinking? Come on. Tell me. It's just that. You have made me wonder. Yes? Mrs. Harrington, forgive me for asking this, but do you think it is possible for someone to find a new mother? Have I offended you? Of course not. I'm very touched. I'm so glad. That is why I feel like I can talk to you about Clive, for example. I, I'm very worried about him. He, he's not happy. And I, I do not think it is jealousy. It is something else, more deep in him, trying to explode, like the beginning of an earthquake. Really, my dear, don't you think you're being a little overdramatic? Oh, no, I, I mean exactly this. You see, that boy... It is very difficult for me to explain. I appreciate your attempt, but really, I'm sure I know my children rather better than you do. But just in this case, with Clive, I, I feel something which frightens me. I, I don't know why. Oh, for heaven's sake! I, I'm sorry. I mean, after all, as you admitted yourself, you are only a newcomer to the family, remember? Now, why don't you go and play me some of your nice music? Oh, it's you. Isn't he back yet? No. No one's seen him in the village. Do you think he's run away? I mean, not coming home for lunch or dinner. You go up to bed, Pamela. It's late. Where's Walter? In his room. Now, get along. Don't dawdle. Oh, all right. Good night. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Pam, my dear. Uh, Louise, he hasn't been to any of the pubs. The pubs? Always the pubs. Well, where else is he likely to go? Your son's turning into a drunkard. He's your son, too. No, not anymore. You've seen to that. That's the nastiest thing you've ever said to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. I don't know what I mean anymore. It's all so mixed up. I can't stand much more. I just can't. What? The frustration. My life was never meant to be like this, so limited. I feel I'm being choked to death. Can't you understand, Stanley? What do you want me to do? If you want a divorce, well... Oh, it's all so vulgar. I'm a vulgar man. Do you? Do you want one? I'm too old to start again. Louise, I'm not the easiest man in the world to live with. I... I don't know what you want. In any way, I don't seem to be able to give it to you. Look here. Suppose we went away somewhere, alone together. Do you think it might help? Do you? Stanley, I want to ask you to do something for me. Something rather difficult. What is it? It's to do with Pamela. Pam? Well, actually, it's about Walter. I'm afraid he's having a bad effect on her. She's just at that age, you know, impressionable, romantic. I'm afraid she's getting a bit of a crush. You want me to talk to her? No. Uh, something more drastic, I'm afraid. I think we must let Walter go. Oh, in the most tactful way, of course. And the sooner the better. Hmm. I see. He's upstairs now. Good evening, all. Oh, Clive! Well, would you mind telling me where you've been? You've been out since midday. Like the tide, we're back, you see. Now, listen, my boy. Why don't you go upstairs, Stanley, and do what I asked you? Very well. I leave you to take care of your sensitive son. Your father and I have been worried to death. Oh, do I detect a new note in the air? Your father and I. <laughs> How splendid a new alliance. Your father and I. Congratulations. I always thought you two ought to get married. You're drunk and disgusting. I'll get you something to eat. May I come in, Walter? Oh, oh, of course, Mr. Harrington. Has Clive returned? He's just come in, drunk. Do you drink? I don't remember seeing you. Uh, n not very much. My no. son drinks a lot. Can you think of any good reason for it? I do not think people drink for a good reason. I'll tell you why he drinks. He drinks so that he can get over being with me. Have you noticed how this family never gets together in this house? Are you afraid of me? No. My son is, or so I'm told. What do you think? I... I think... Yes. Do you? I, I think he feels you do not love him. And yet, all the time, you are expecting him 
to love you. Rubbish. He feels that you are judging him, thinking how useless he is. And how does he feel about me, eh? That I'm common? Oh, no. Ah, well, that doesn't matter. You start a family, work and plan, and suddenly you turn round and there's nothing there. Probably never was. What's a family, anyway? Just kids with your blood in them? There's no reason why they should like you. Silly to expect it, really. But to find that your son hates you... No, you're wrong. How sensitive do you have to be for that? Tell me. Because I don't know too much about the sort of thing. I'm always too busy making money. Go on, tell me. Sensitive people have deep feelings, don't they? They suffer a lot. Oh, please, Mr. Haggis. It's all right. I don't want to hear. Then please excuse me. Are you all right? Why are you just sitting here? I've been talking to your father. He thinks you hate him. Clive, what is the matter? Speak to me. Walter, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong, except in your mind. What you think about. What is it? What have they done to me? Your parents love you, Clive. Everything <sighs> they have done has been from love. But you, you are like a butterfly on a pin... Uh, what is the word? Impaled. They've impaled me like a butterfly. Yes. And you must get off the pin. You must get away from here. At the end of term at Cambridge, don't come back here. Go anywhere else, but don't come back here. Please say you will. Yes, I'll go. Oh, good. Uh, here comes your father. Clive, don't you think you'd better go to bed? Are you all right now? Yes, I'm all right. Good night, father. And now what the devil do you think you're doing? Mr. Harrington. Don't, Mr. Harrington, me. With your smarmy voice and bowing from the waist, you had the gall just now to tell me what was wrong with me. You asked my opinion. Oh, yes. And now you're influencing my boy against me. I heard you telling him to go away from here. How dare you? Working in my house for me to do a thing like that. My friendship for your son. And your friendship with my daughter, too. What about that? Oh, Pamela? Yeah. Your employer, Mrs. Harrington, has asked me to dismiss you because she thinks you're having a bad effect upon our daughter. But it's not true. Not true at no, all. No, I don't think it is. Then why? why? Could it be because you're trying to make love to my wife? Oh, no. You filthy German typical. Take what you want in a devil with everyone else. You're a fool, too. Do you think she would ever risk anything for you? Oh, no, I know it's very cultured to look down on money... But that's a very different thing from giving it up. Well, you've had your chips, and she sent me to give them to you. You can't believe this. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it's quite possible. We've got an unimpeachable witness. Can't you guess? No? <laughs> your pal, your good pal, Clyde. No. He told me he saw you together last night in this room. No, no. Do you know what we do with people like you in England? Chuck them out. I'm going to fix it so you never get your naturalization papers. I'm going to write to the immigration people and tell them that while under my roof, you try to force your attentions on my 15-year-old daughter. Try to get your papers after that. Stanley, I thought you were upstairs. Walter, what's the matter? I've done what you said. Yes, but how did you do it? Was he very brutal, Hebel? But you know it's for the best, don't you? No, no, I, I beg you. Now, Walter, don't get so upset. I'm... I'm afraid you deserve it, you know. I'm really very disappointed with you. Both our children have been considerably disturbed by your presence, and you know I'll never allow oh, that. Please. Now, about financial arrangements, we'll make it as easy for you as possible. An extra month's wages, I think, Stanley? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, that's very generous, I think. Don't you agree, Walter? Yes. Very generous. Good. Now, don't look so stricken. It makes it so much more difficult for everyone. Perhaps you'd better go up to your room and get your things together. Yes. Well, I can't say you handled that exactly brilliantly, Stanley. I passed Walter on the stairs. He didn't speak to me. What's the matter? He's a little upset. Why? What have you been doing down here? Father, what have you done to Walter? Both of you! If you really want to know, I told him what you said last night about him and your mother. Me? You and your daughter's tutor, my dear. A pretty picture. What did he tell you? Clive, what did you say? Never mind. I didn't believe it. You didn't believe me? No. Did you really think I would? Then why did you pretend to Walter that you did? That's something for you and your mother to work out. You, you... You didn't suggest that Walter and I were... But this is horrible. Why did you say such things? I don't know. I don't know why. 
I do something terrible that I'll remember all my life. That'll make me sick whenever I think of it. But I don't know why. But it's not true. It's not true what you said. No, I told a lie. But what I felt under that lie about you and Walter, was that so untrue? No, no, don't answer me. Because you've forgotten how to be honest about feelings. True. The only true thing I know is what's happened to him, my father. Clive, you frighten me. What do you mean? Don't you know? Can't you see what we've done? There isn't a Stanley Harrington anymore. We've broken him in bits. I don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't, poor man. Clive, you hate me. I hate. Isn't that enough? Is the war in this house never going to end? War? The war you and father declared when you got married. The culture war with me as ammunition. I won't go on with this conversation another minute. Your father's upset, that's all. But why is he upset? It's something to do with Walter, isn't it? What have you done to Walter? Well, if you must know, he's been dismissed. Oh, mother, no. I assure you there were excellent reasons. But you can't dismiss him. You can't. Not even you. He can't go away from here. If you want to know, I did it for Pam. I'm afraid his influence over her was getting far stronger than I cared for. I see. What was it? Jealousy? Shame when you saw the innocent together? Or just the sheer vulgarity of competing with your own daughter? How dare you? Dearest mother, who are you trying to fool? I know your rules. Don't give sympathy to a man if others are giving it to. He'll never see how unique you are. Besides, doing what everyone else does is so vulgar. Do you think you're the only one who can ask terrible questions? Supposing I ask a few. You ought to be glad Walter's going, but you're not. Why not? Why aren't you glad, Clive? Why? Why? Clive! Clive, come quickly! What's the matter, Stanley? Something's wrong. It's gas from Walter's room. I can't get the door open. Walter! We're coming! Is it locked? No. The door seems... Then we're both touched. Touched. What's the matter? I was asleep and I heard it's Danny It's Walter. Call. Phone for the doctor, quickly. Pam, don't phone for the doctor, quickly. Ah, that's done it. Oh. The room's full of gas. Stanley, get the window open. God, let him be alive. Let him be alive. And give us courage. All of us. Mm.